Hey kids, welcome to lesson 17, building an app, Canvas Painter, adjusting circle size. Among the other pieces of information contained in each event parameter are the values movement X and movement Y. These numbers tell us how far, in pixels, the mouse has moved since the last mouse event was triggered and can be used to measure the speed of the mouse. If the event is large, the mouse is moving fast. If the event is small, the mouse is moving slowly. Let's use the mouse movement speed to make a cool effect. When we draw a real pen or brush, the line usually gets thin when we are making quick strokes and wider and darker when we're making slower ones. We can generate this effect by using movement X and movement Y to calculate the radius for the circle. Since this calculation might be a little tricky, a smart thing to do would be to write a function that takes movement X and movement Y as parameters and returns a value that should be used as a radius. Hmm, that sounds pretty interesting. There are several ways to do this. One possible way to write the function is provided on the right, which uses some arithmetic tricks. The function to the right is actually only three lines of code, but is heavily commented to explain what is going on. It makes use of a function called math.abs, which returns an absolute value of a number. Feel free to use this or another method of converting movement X and movement Y into a radius. What is an absolute value, you ask? Well, math.abs takes a number as an input and returns the positive version of this number. In math, absolute value is often written with the symbol right here, and that's just two lines. So a 10 is the absolute value of 10, and negative 10 is the absolute value of negative 10. Both, though, equate to 10. In JavaScript, we use math.abs instead of that two lines. Math.abs negative 10 and math.abs 10 both equate to 10. You have probably seen this symbol in math class and have probably talked about absolute value a little. Basically, it's going to always return the positive number. Let's take a look at our example here. We're going to create a function dot radius, and it has two parameters, change x and change y. Their comments say the absolute value is used so that the negative speeds are treated as positive. Adding them together provides a rough estimate of the total speed. That means we're just looking how quick these X and Y changed. Slower means it's going to be thicker. Faster means it's going to be thinner. We are going to create a variable and that's going to be called math abs. And what's this doing again is just getting the absolute value. That means if it's negative 20, it'll just return positive 20. And we're going to add those two numbers up. Their comment says, we want larger speeds to give smaller radiuses. One is added so that even for high speeds, the radius is one. Looks like we have an output here, and the output equals one plus five divided by speed. And we output return. Hmm. So we are calling this speed here. We're basically adding one to it and then dividing it. Why are we using five? Well, that's our current radius we have right now. That doesn't seem too bad. We have our do this, write a function like the one above that accepts two parameters, one each for movement X and movement Y, and returns a radius. A higher speed should lead to a smaller circle. Inside mouse move event handler, set the radius of the circle to the value returned by your function where the function takes event.movementx and event.movementy as an input. For example, if using the function above, your code would look like this. We have our circle, event.offset offset x, offset y. We have a dot radius is going to be the movement x and movement y. Looks like we're going to take our original circle radius and replace it with our new variable. 
Run your program and confirm that when you draw the speed of the mouse affects the radius of the dots. The effect should look something similar as below. Looks like when we hit our original or random, still works the same way, but how fast or slow we're moving on the screen will affect what the dots look like. Hmm, that sounds pretty fun. What do we have to do first? First thing we have to do is create this function. So let's go to the bottom of our list. They gave us all our information so we can pretty much just copy this. We are doing function dot radius. We have two parameters for it, change X and change Y. Don't forget your curly Q at the end there. We wanna create a variable with inside that variable is going to be called speed, and it is going to equal the absolute value. How do we get that? That is our math.abs. And we are going to make sure we're always returning the positive value of x. Then we're going to add that with our positive number of y. There is some math tomfoolery happening here. Do not forget your semicolon at the end. Well, we created a variable. We have to use that variable somehow. We are going to say uh, variable output now is going to equal 1 plus 5, y5, five, that's our current radius, divided by speed, our variable from above. Then we want to use return. Remember, return from our last lesson. We just want to get whatever that current value is and output it. And then we have our one curly Q at the end. Return is not spelled right. Make sure you spell it correctly. You're going to have a little yellow triangle here. That's because it's going to say, hey, you created your function, but you haven't called it yet. Where do we have to call it? We have to go back up to our circle command here and we have to find where our canvas main is. So it's currently right here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna add that number to store. What number are we gonna add? Well, if we came here to our do this, it is going to look exactly like this right here. We're now going to replace our five with our dot radius. And we're returning the values for event.movement, spelled right, movement x, and event.movement y should be parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon at the end. Dot radius now is going to give us our x and y values from our function. That means the slower we're going, we should get our darker circles. Faster should be lighter and skinnier. Let's see if that's what's actually happening. Hit run, hold the shift key down. I'm going really slow and really fast. Slow and fast. So it looks like definitely we are getting bigger circles when I'm getting slow and really tiny circles when I go real, real fast. As a note, if you want to increase the circle size, how do you do that? Well, within our function dot radius here, our output, we are using five to divide speed by our absolute values. Why did we use five? Well, that was our original radius. If we change this to a larger number, let's say 20, when I hit run, I will get larger circles. Let's test it out. If I go slow, I get bigger circles, quick, much smaller circles. I just wanted to point out real quick, if you didn't like the size, how you can make them larger. So you just have to divide by a bigger number, bigger radius to start off with. I think it looks like our code is working correctly. What did we do? Well, what we did here was we made another function called dot radius, and basically we took the x and y 
we change them to a positive number or an absolute value using the math.abs command. And what we did was we added one to that divided by our original radius of five that we used to have. B just basically gave us a different size circle. Smaller numbers give a smaller radius, larger numbers, larger radius. We used our return output to get those values. And then we called those values in our circle command in our main event handler. Pretty neat if you ask me. Looking back to our do this, we wrote a function exactly like the one above here. Inside our mouse movement event handler, we change the circle to call to our new function dot radius. We ran the program and definitely bigger circles when we went slower and tiny little circles when we went faster. Very neat lesson, kids. This was a tough one, but you did a great job. I think that's all code.org wants from us. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I will see you on the next lesson.